In Formal Logic, a pragmatic approach by Douglas Walton lives up to his title. It's written in a more informal, casual style. This is the second edition, published by Cambridge. Hi, I'm the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com, and you might be like me. I'm an autodidact wanting to expand my knowledge. In a manner of speaking, we reside in a world of illogic. Fallacies are nearly ubiquitous in political discourse and on the internet. Sound bites and emotions have replaced reason. So, building a strong foundation in logic and critical thinking skills is truly essential when navigating in this world. And if you want to do this with me, consider visiting my website, AmateurLogician.com. Join me on this adventure. Let's expand our intellectual toolkits. So let's take a look at Douglas Walton's book. I should say at the outset, it's not a textbook on formal logic. This is informal logic. So there's no coverage of symbolic logic. And to be honest, while symbolic logic is interesting and useful, it's not as useful as some people might think it is. You really need a foundation in informal logic. There's a certain sense in which that's more important. Yet the book will cover formally valid inferences like modus ponens and modus tollens within the context of everyday argumentation. Now, when I read this book, I was thinking about how it could help someone studying to become a lawyer, for example. There's no question about that. Walton's book really does have a pragmatic approach. It's about addressing practical arguments in the real world. It's about addressing dialogue in a logical manner. So a lot of the dialogue reminded me of a back and forth between two lawyers. Although I say that in this sense, in a good way. It's written in a fun way. It's not dry and technical when you're looking at arguments. And as I said, this book is not about arguments in the abstract, but arguments between people in the active dialogue. And even if you don't read the entire book, it's a nice reference to have. So let's say we're considering a specific type of common fallacy. Walton raises some issues with that fallacy. While they seem obvious after reading Walton, are really not so obvious at first. This book takes a more nuanced approach. Walton really is an expert. He's been thinking about fallacies for many, many years. That's why fallacies are covered in this book more in depth than pretty much any other introductory logic textbook out there. So if we open it up and first look at the table of contents, just to get an idea of what's in here, we'll see there's a lot of um, comments on dialogue. So, for example, chapter one is on argument as reason dialogue. Types of argumentative dialogue, components of argumentative dialogue, persuasion dialogue, negative rules of persuasion dialogue, some major informal fallacies, and so forth. Chapter 2 is on questions and answers in dialogue, presuppositions, in question, uh, pardon me, presuppositions of questions, complex questions, have you stopped abusing your spouse, disjunctive questions, arguments from ignorance, and so forth. Chapter 3 is on criticisms of irrelevance, allegations of irrelevance, global irrelevance, question-answer relevance, setting an agenda for a discussion, red herring versus wrong conclusion, and so forth. Chapter 4 is on appeals to emotion, the argumentum ad populum. We have um, the argument from popularity, problems with appeal to popularity, threatening appeals to force, further ad boculum problems, by the way, the appeal to force is the argumentum ad boculum. We have appeals to pity, which is the argumentum ad misericordium. Chapter 5 is on valid arguments, deductive validity, identifying arguments, validity as a semantic concept, valid forms of argument, invalid arguments, and so forth. Chapter 6 is on personal attack and argumentation, the abusive ad hominem, the circumstantial ad hominem, and so forth. And then chapter 7 is entirely on authority. So, for example, reasonable appeals to authority, argumentation scheme for appeal to expert opinion, critical questions for the appeal to expert opinion, three common errors in citing expert opinions, etc., etc. And then the last two chapters, chapter 8, we have inductive errors, bias, and fallacies. Meaningless and unknowable statistics, sampling procedures, insufficient and biased statistics, 
There's the post hoc argument, six kinds of post hoc ears, bias due to defining variables, and so forth. And then finally, chapter nine is on natural language argumentation, ambiguity and vagueness, loaded terms and question begging language, equivocation and amphibology, arguments based on analogy, slippery slope, subtle equivocations, variability of strictness of standards, etc. Let's take a look at the back of the book, and here it says, <clears throat> Informal Logic is an introductory guidebook to the basic principles of constructing sound arguments and criticizing bad ones. Non-technical in approach, it is based on 186 examples, which Douglas Walton, a leading authority in the field of informal logic, discusses and evaluates in clear, illustrative detail. Walton explains how errors, fallacies, and other key failures of argument occur. He shows how correct uses of argument are based on sound strategies for reason, persuasion, and critical responses. Among the many subjects covered are forms of valid argument, defeasible arguments, relevance, appeals to emotion, personal attack, straw man argument, jumping to a conclusion, uses and abuses of expert opinion, problems in drawing conclusions from polls and statistics, Loaded terms, equivocation, arguments from analogy, and techniques of posing, replying to, and criticizing questions. So, it's readable, and, um, and it takes that informal, practical approach. There's many, many examples, as the textbook indicated. And I think you will learn something from this. Um, I certainly did. Um, it made me think further in terms of the various fallacies. So you can have the fallacies, you can think about them in a very surface level, but this takes you to the next step, which is important. And I can't understate the importance of informal logic, because I don't want to exaggerate the importance of formal logic and learning the categorical syllogisms or you know, propositional logic, predicate logic, modal logic. You can do all that stuff, it's good, it's important, but at the end of the day, if you do not master informal logic, you're not going to be good at encountering arguments in the real world by politicians, um, by authors, by philosophers. So you really need this grounding in informal logic. So I hope this video has been helpful and um, um, I want to wish you well. I hope to see you again. I'm the Amateur Logician. Good luck to you and um, keep studying.